Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Sarah. So, today, I'm going to be showing you the project call for my song, uh, Blanc, which got featured in Andrew Blanc's, um, I guess, follow-up video to his weird sax techniques video. Yes. <laughs> so, before I start, I just want to say that I'm really happy that he featured me, and I really don't think I should have been featured, because my song was like, I don't know, I felt like it wasn't as interesting, I guess, as the others, but whatever, he liked it, so he put it in. So, let's start, I'm going to be going channel by channel and showing you like how some of them work and explaining some of the processing. It's really just a small project. Uh, I finished it in about, if I look here, in, in, in here, in info, six hours and a half. And, yeah, half an hour. So, let's start. First, uh, we have the kick. Oh, and I should turn off the master, actually. This is the kick. Now, what's special about the kick is it has two layers. There's this and this. But this one goes into the processing of this one, actually. Up here, there's the transient, right? It goes into the actual processing of the kick, so they get it processed together. And it's just a simple patcher which separates the low end and distorts it in its own way and the high and and start to some other way and then they get compressed back i don't know what i did here but yes and then i distort them together uh, other than that there is side chain whatever so together they oh god oh god So that's the kick, right? And then there is the snare, which is just one layer. I really like the snare, actually. The copy. Uh, these are, these three are all, like, from the back. So the snare has some pretty heavy processing on it. And it's like change for the river. So... What's happened is it's first getting like, distorted, compressed a little, uh, EQ'd, so it's in pitch, I think. Uh, and then we have a pitch shifter, which pulls it down quite a bit. As you can see, like, what is this? It'll turn 60 hertz almost. And then it's going into a balance, which is, like, a little bit wet, right? Which sounds like this. And then it's getting like processed, whatever. And then there's a version which is getting pitched back up, but it's like a bonus bit, like 300 hertz. And it sounds higher than the original. And it's this is fully wet. And I also put a vocal tumbler. Oh, yeah, to make it wider. And together they. That's why the reverb is like so. Different and colorful. So uh, then we have the drum loop. This is not from the from the pack. Nothing special. Just a little bit of a little bit uh, a little bit of extreme distortion, just to make it sound cool and dirty. Then we have this, which is like the... To keep the rhythm going, nothing special for it. Yeah, nothing. Not even reverb. Uh, next up we have the basses, which they were doing a funny thing at the start and then actually showing themselves off. So, this is the first bass. Uh, I think it's called Alarm now. Oh, uh, this is how it sounds. So there's a little bit of automation, some pitch automation here, and that's about it. And at the start, 
Oh, Shadow Master Attack, how does Shadow Process thing? So, first, it sounds like this. Yeah, I know. So, Serum Effects in here, uh, I'll just remove everything. Depression, some delay. This has its like great all the way up and beacon all the way up. Just a little bit of mix that sounds so distant and cool. Uh, OTP. Trigger for ambience. Uh, EQ to to clean it up, more, no, it's not, it's not, no. And OTP, which I'm actually clipping it, just cause, I don't know why. So that's the first bass. As you can hear, like, the huge screech was just, it's trashed. And I'll show this after I'm done with all the bases, actually. We have this bass. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So, first it sounds like this. I know. And frequency shift actually gave it a lot of its tone. It's pitched down a lot. 350. Oh, 353. effects here with a bit of Wait, I'm just turn off. That could have been a cool sound, but I decided not to use it because it was really short and I just yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Ambiance, just like the alarm. So, uh, some EQ and Maximus. That also clips it. And these are the so called plonks. <laughs> this is why the song is called plonk. So, uh, then we have the reverb stab thing here. This is how it sounds. It tells from the start. Uh, what's happening here is some, you know, multi... Oh, I forgot its name. <laughs> yes. Um, multi-lane or whatever. God, I'm sorry, I'm tired. Basically what's happening, there is a version which is kicking the low end and starting it, and then there is a version which is kicking the high end and boosting to frequency. I don't know what frequency those are, I forgot. It was a while ago. Starting them and then reverbing it and automating the reverb. And a little bit of Maximus uh, beforehand. And also, this is like, I think I can locate it. Just locate it. Here. It's this one, but I used a speech ballistic thing. And they set up an octave. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Next up, we have this. Wet Brow sound, which has a little bit of history. It was... Basically, it started off as this. Actually, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, let's listen to the whole thing, actually. And... Oops, sorry. So... Uh, what I did... Was... Originally, I just wanted this. The, the brow. If I could find it, yes, we were sex. It sounds like this. 
I just fixed it, right? Oh, the storage here. Fantastic. Uh, the storage is somewhere in the reverb. Now, I should turn this off. There. Sounds cool. Uh, I decided to layer a uh, song uh, under it. This is one of the few things that uh, isn't on the back. Uh, if I look here, it's actually a monster and it's being, I don't know, this bird in phase a little. Nothing special. What you can hear is that I used this character. So if we stop, thank you. Now, originally, the sound sounded something like after like a lot of processing, something like this. And let me turn it on. I felt it was like sort of boring. So I added this structure here. Thought it would sound cool. And added this one too. And on here, I was like playing around and I wanted to load in the frequency shifter, so I did. But basically, for this plugin, the um, default preset. Uh, makes sense that it's already phasing and it sounds really cool with the bit crushed noise, right? A bit crushed? Yeah, bit crushed. Bit crushed noise. So, I pulled it down a little, right? Because it was modulating. And it sounded awesome. It sounds like a laser. Because... Oh. Next up uh, is the last phase. This one. Which actually doesn't have a name. I don't know if I was. Yeah, I did. So, it has a nice sound to it. It speaks almost. It's made out of two layers. First, there was the sax. Oh, I should remove this first. And this. So it sounds like this. It also has a sub under it. The group sound. This is the third sound that I didn't use. So well, let's talk about the sax a little. This came in afterward. Oh, uh, I EQ'd it. I didn't find this. Uh, because I was going to distort it, right? So much more movement. And the filter actually gives it the uh, movement. This is the default preset for the filter. Any sort of filtering works. You just gotta have a little bit of resonance and some movement. I just like this. I, I don't know why I'm so like, in love with the filter. Oh, right. Uh, and some very cute to remove this sub. Now, this combined with the boop song, which is just slightly turned down here, I think this. Sounds really cool and phasey and weird. Uh, that's it for the subs. Oh, for the subs, go for the bases. Uh, one special thing that I did to them is in the start, they have this sort of uh, ambient mode. Which is basically like a little bit of all the any processing, yes. <clears throat> if I <clears throat> if I knew how to speak, I would say it. Basically what's happening is this 
verse bit makes it sound like lasery and weird. It's basically a really fast frequency shifter on it. Okay. Again, as you can see, right, that's making it sound cool, especially with the reverb on it, uh, above it. And then this is going into like a little bus, and then it's getting double processed again. One with a high pass. This is like a washout, basically, and some reverb. And you can start mixing this in this. Basically, this acts like a washout. Um. And you can mix it in with the original sample if you want to. Like, I was like this if you want to, and you can have some of this or some of this, whichever. That's it for the basses. So you can hear that too. So yeah, that's it for the basses. Just the automation, whatever. And we have this riser sound. Which is taken directly from the back and nothing much to do with anything. Nothing at all. Very oh, cool. Now, I call this atmosphere fire. Basically, the way it was made, it's. It's one of those. They can put into Edison if I can find it. Here it is. Basically, you can blur it in here, and that's what I did. Uh, if you don't have FL Studio or yeah, you can like do the same thing with granular synthesis and just like go crazy with the um, grain placings or whatever it's called. Uh, you can also do this with like. I know, I think Ableton has a blur reverb or something. You can do it with a blur too, but most of us come with granular synthesis. Um, where reverb works too, like just going nuts with the reverb and putting kind of decay and like no. What's it called? No dry signal in. So that's it. It's being slightly filtered and it has a kind of reverb on it. And we have a minus one operative version here. Awesome. Next up, we have this. Just one of the sounds from here. Oh, I just moved it like one semicolon down because I thought it sounded cool. Oh, we have this. Gets washed out. For me. We have this little thing that comes in. We have some more flavor. And here it is. Basically, the way this was made is just the thing processed like crazy, like EQ, PE, and reverb and such, and the frequency shifter that goes pretty fast. I really love using the shifters, and there's a minus one octave version here. And that's the whole project. I know. Um, uh, yeah, it was a really fun, like, little challenge, I guess. And it's definitely something that I, I don't do a lot, like, just take samples and go crazy with them, but you can, and it's super fun. Like, <laughs> a lot of people love saying this sort of stuff, especially in Andrew Wong's, um, one sample for, for flips, I mean, um, obviously this wasn't as difficult as that, because in that they have, like, one single sample, sometimes it's short, and sometimes it can be absolute shit, but, you know, it's a start. Yeah, that's it. Well, thank you for everyone who checked out my song, and I'm really, I'm really happy, really, about this. Um, this is just like an ending, but, um, I'm working on something.
Oh, uh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you again. Uh, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe. Thank you. Uh, goodbye.